The first quantum number in the modern atomic theory is called the principal quantum number. Notice it's designated with the letter N. And it corresponds to the energy levels in the Bohr model of the atom. These are the uh, rows on the periodic table. So there are seven rows on the periodic table, and that means the first row with hydrogen and helium are row one, which is n equals one, lithium to neon is n equals two, and so forth. And we'll look at that in just a second. If, if we look at this box right here, we'll see what's called an electron configuration. 1s1, 2s2, 2p2. This shows two of the four quantum numbers. The one here indicates the n number, which is principal quantum number the first quantum number. The S and the P indicates the second quantum number, which we'll talk about. This is related to the third quantum number, but it doesn't really show what that is. We'll get to that. Um, now, N, like we said, is the energy levels on the periodic table, the rows. So if we start here with hydrogen, row one, let me scroll down to so you can see the other side. Hydrogen will go down to helium, as you can see, element number two. And then N equals two would start with lithium, beryllium, and would continue with uh, boron, carbon, all these over here. Row three, N equals three is sodium, magnesium, and you go across and you get to aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and so forth. And you can see that uh, all seven rows of the periodic table are illustrated there, and they are the first principal quantum number. Now, something else you'll notice, if you look right up here, you'll see S block. And then down here, you'll see D block. And if we go to the other side, you'll see P block. And way down at the bottom, you see F block. These are actually related to the second quantum number, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, I talked about the energy levels. Here's an emission spectrum, and here's the corresponding absorption spectrum. Each line, as you can see here, there's the dark lines. This is when the atom is in the ground state, and we zap an electron with electricity, heat, or a photon, and it absorbs the energy and goes to an excited state. And the energy that's taken away is that black line for each of these spots. Those are all energy levels there. And then the reverse would be that atom is now unstable, and it wants to return to the ground state, and it has to release energy. Energy and frequency are directly related. So frequency is the color. There's one there, 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 and there. Just exactly corresponding to the absorption spectrum lines, but in reverse. One absorbs the energy, one gives off the energy in the form of color. So these are all representing energy levels, the N number, the princi principal quantum number. So again, we see that the principal quantum number, N, corresponds to the energy levels. Notice B here. N refers to the ionization energy of the electrons in that energy level. Ionization energy is simply the energy needed to ionize an atom, in particular to remove an electron. We'll talk more about that in the periodic table unit, which is next. Notice letter C. I've given you an example of neon. Neon has an, a, a nuclear symbol of 10 and 20 there. 10 is the atomic number. 20 is the atomic mass, which includes the neutrons. 10 is the number of protons, but it's also the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So how would we write that in terms of quantum numbers? You can see that there is a 1 for the energy level. So here's 1. It says 1s2, which that's quantum number 2 here. But the 1 is row 1. It includes hydrogen and helium. You can see a different atom for neon because it has 10 electrons. The first two electrons would actually go like hydrogen and helium's electrons. Then you'd continue lithiums, borons, or sorry, beryllium's, borons, and so forth, all the way to neon, where you get another energy level involved. Hydrogen and helium are contained in row one, and then you have lithium and, and so forth in row two. That's n equals two. This is the principal quantum number. And we come down here. 2n squared actually indicates the maximum number of electrons in a particular energy level. It doesn't say in the atom, it says in the energy level. So for instance, row 1 on the periodic table, which includes hydrogen and helium, okay, you put a 1 in there. 2 times 1 squared is 2. It means it can only take 2 electrons, and that's what we've shown here in this chart. Uh, row 2 includes lithium, right? 
and uh, beryllium and boron, and it keeps going. If you, you know, my periodic table is over there, so I always look there. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and neon. That's row two. Just that row, you put for row two, n equals two. See, n equals two. Two squared is four times two is eight. So row two on the periodic table can have up to eight electrons. But notice you put the two together for the neon atom. There's ten electrons all together. If we go to a bigger atom that includes the third period of the periodic table, the third row, you put a 3 in here. And again, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 electrons, plus the previous ones, because they all count. And you could go all the way to row 4, row 5, row 6, and so forth. Lastly, the n represents the size of the electron cloud related to its distance from the nucleus. That makes sense. The quantum numbers, and there are four of them, basically go from most general to most specific. So the principal quantum number, represented by n, is, shows the size of the electron cloud, which we used with Schrodinger. You remember he talked about the standing waves and the region of high probability where you would expect to find the electron 90% of the time. So that big cloud is called n. And in most atoms, there's going to be more than one n there. That introduces the principal quantum number.